Kindle Fire. No, this ain't no damn Kindle Fire. This is a Nexus 7. You know, it says Nexus on the back. Duh. This is the Nexus 7. It's Google's $199 tablet made to compete with the likes of the Kindle Fire, the Toshiba Excite 7.7, the Samsung Galaxy Tab 7, uh, all of the devices of that nature. And in this class of device, it's a very good competitor. For one reason alone is that it's running the latest software, Android 4.1. As you can see when I browse through here and when I pull down the notification tab, you see that's different. You don't see that on most tablets. So what do you get for your $199? Let's take a look at that now. The Nexus 7, as the name implies, has a 7-inch screen. It's got a 1280 by 800 resolution, and the screen is IPS. So now, it's not going to blow you away. You know, it's not like Super AMOLED or IPS Plus or any of that. It's just your regular LCD backlit display. So you're not going to be reading anything pull side, and you're not going to be blown away, but you're going to get a solid screen for when you're watching play music, listening to play music or watching play movies and all that. But there's one caveat. It's Wi-Fi only, so you're going to need to be in a Wi-Fi place to access the web, of course, or, you know, maybe tethered through your phone. The Nexus 7 has uneven uh, bezels, so on the right and left side, it's kind of slim, but on the top, it looks a little thick. Uh, you'll notice on the top right here, it has a front-facing camera. It's 1.2 megapixels, so you can use that for video chatting. There's no camera on the back, and why? Because most tablet cameras suck, and you don't need one. You know, that's kind of the trade-off you get with a $199 tablet. Uh, if you're someone who needs to have a tablet uh, the, with a camera on the back, you might want to look elsewhere. But for other people, this excels in other areas, namely the weight. It's only 340 grams. I can hold it with one hand, and that's kind of the point. You know, 340 grams is about 0.75 pounds. So when you have a 10-inch tablet for reading, you typically need to hold it with 10 hands. That's not the case here. You can hold this extremely comfortable with one hand. You're sitting holding it up when you're sleeping at night. You're on a chair in your living room or anywhere in a library on the bus and you're reading comfortably is not an issue. Even when you switch into landscape, you're holding your hand like this. All the weight is evenly distributed and it doesn't feel heavy in the slightest bit. To clarify my uneven bezel comment, that's just because the virtual navigation buttons on the bottom and the pull down notification drawer at the top make it appear a little thicker than it actually is. It's still a very solid design. And speaking of solid designs, I gotta mention that this has Corning Gorilla Glass, so it's gonna be reinforced glass. It's scratch resistant, not scratch proof, but resistant. So I could mess it up with my nails, but my nails aren't that long, so that's a bad example. But, you know, moving on. Uh, it's got Corning Gorilla Glass on the front. The side has a hard plastic. You know, I, I did a couple of drops on it so far and it didn't get scratched, but it was from a very short distance. Now the back, this is where I really love it. Uh, just to be clear, the back isn't white. I have the Google I.O. edition, which is why it's white. The one that you order online is gonna have a, a black back. And it's gonna have these little uh, poked, tiny little indentures on the back on a very soft material. I'm not exactly sure what kind of material it is. I know it's synthetic, uh, kinda has that uh feel of like a couch or something it's very nice when you hold it you know that's the cliche among device reviewers oh it feels good in the hand and that's the best way that i would describe this like i mentioned it's also very light so you're going to feel comfortable when you're actually touching the nexus 7 you're reading posts reading flipboard answering emails or playing games anything like that and you know while we mentioned playing games let's talk about the internal aspects of this device the Nexus 7 has a quad-core Tegra 3 processor in it. Now, if you're saying, hey, isn't that the same processor used in the Transformer Prime? The answer is yes, which means you're going to get a very good gaming experience. This is Dead Trigger. This is a new zombie game, and it's got the Tegra built into it. So you're going to get some very amazing graphics for explosions, for uh, rendering rain, uh, things like that. they got blood flying everywhere. Uh, there's even a cool effect that when it rains sometimes, the screen will kind of be covered by little water droplets. And that's something unique to the Tegra devices. And remember, you've got Tegra Zone to open up your eyes to a bunch of new games that you can get when you have a Tegra device which this happens to be. It's pretty much the cheapest uh, Tegra 3 device you're gonna find. 
The Nexus 7 has a gigabyte of RAM, so it does a fairly good job of loading pages. It zooms in and out nice and smoothly. It scrolls very well. So when you're in the browser, you shouldn't have too many issues. As far as battery life goes, it's got 4,325 milliamp uh, battery life. That translates to about eight hours of continuous usage. So I could watch Transformers, I can watch 21 Jump Street, and go on YouTube for a little bit, and sense a few tweets, and have enough juice left over to read uh, from the Nook app on my way home. As far as connectivity goes, you've got Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and NFC built in. But because you can't always get access to the internet, you're going to want to store some files locally on your device. This is where you're going to run into a problem. Because when you go to settings and you go to uh, storage, this, uh, the storage area, you'll notice that it says it only has 5.92 gigabytes of free space. Uh, that's the total space that you can access. This device is advertised as having eight gigabytes of space, but a lot of that is reserved away from the user. So when you go into the apps and you go into the pictures and videos, you wanna keep that in mind. You're not gonna be able to store your full media library on here. So you're gonna only wanna store what you need for your regular usage or a trip that you're taking or something like that. Below this little ASUS logo, you're going to notice that it has speakers on the back. I would have preferred had they spread this out so you can get that stereo effect, but I understand why they didn't do it. As far as other audio options, you've got your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack at the bottom, and you also have a micro USB charging port. Unfortunately, there's nothing special about this port. There's no HDMI out, there's no MHL, so you won't be connecting this to a larger screen. This is pretty much strictly for on-device consumption of video and music content. Enough with the hardware, meat and potatoes, let's get to dessert, and by that, of course, I mean Jelly Bean. I don't know if you guys saw the Android presentation at Google I.O., but Jelly Bean is much faster thanks to something called Project Butter. What they did is they changed the buffering, so it's three times as fast as it used to be, and they changed the animations. You'll notice when I'm switching between apps, it loads very quickly, yeah. it, loads, it loads very quickly, it, Everything pretty much snaps to it. You know, there's not that perceived lag that used to be there before. I thought Ice Cream Sandwich was plenty fast, but they found a way to make it even faster. And when you're switching between apps, when you're going from one to another, when you're going home, you're loading stuff, uh, you're adding widgets, and just the, the overall performance of it is really amazing. I mean, noticeably, you can read magazines in there because it starts selling them in Google Play, as well as you have a magazine app that you can access when you want to read. So I can browse through some of the titles that Google has. There are some that have a 14 day trial and I can start reading this issue of Esquire. I can uh, turn the pages like I normally would. Oh wait, hold on. I'm at the end of the magazine so I gotta turn the other way. All right, I can turn pages how I normally would or I can tap on the bottom and I can get a quick scroll through other pages. And let's say I'm reading an article and I want to zoom in, I just tap on one particular area, I could scroll around, but that's kind of like a PDF view. What if I want something that's a little more uh, updated and for the device? I could tap at the top, click view text, and it'll switch to a, like a Google uh, current style of reading. The home screen is especially interesting because it has like an auto arrange feature. So if I want to move this widget around to the top and switch places, I can just hover over the apps and it knows to move those around. Uh, I can do the same thing with other widgets, make it find a place. Now, if I want to add another widget on here, it's a cool feature because if I put it right here, it knows to instantly give it the same size that it's normally do. But if I move it over here, it knows to shorten the amount of space to fit in the allotted amount of space. And it's very easy, very compelling. If I want to get rid of something, instead of dragging it up all the way to the remove like that, I can also just hold down, flip it up, and it knows to get rid of it. One thing that really annoys me about the Nexus 7 is that when I'm in an app and I switch into landscape, it knows that and recognizes that and switches accordingly. But when I go home, it forces me back into portrait mode. Now I know with a seven inch tablet, I'm most likely to hold it in portrait, but I prefer the app to let me make that decision. In Honeycomb, when you held a device in portrait, it looked in portrait. When you switch over to landscape, the, the home launcher switch with you, and that doesn't happen in Jelly Bean. Now, there is a hack that you can do when you go into settings. If you root your device, you change the build prop edit, you can switch over to the more traditional view of the tablets, but Jelly Bean is set to recognize seven inch tablets and force you into portrait mode when you're in the home screen. That's one particular negative if you don't plan on rooting your device. 
So what it all boils down to is this. If you're in the market for a tablet, this is the tablet to get. Now, at $199, the price is perfect. And when you compare it to other devices in this class, it pretty much beats them all because it's got the most up-to-date software, 4.1 Jelly Bean. It's got access to more apps than the Kindle Fire because it has Google Play. I can go in here, I can go to apps, and I can get the whole ecosystem just like Amazon does. That's pretty much what made the Kindle Fire successful is that you can do all the media consumption you want. Now you can do that on Google Play. You've got your books, you got your magazines, you got movies and TV, you've got your music, you got pretty much everything that you can need to enjoy the full aspects of a tablet. Now, there are definitely some things to take away from this, like I mentioned earlier in the review, but at the end of the day, you've got Tegra Zone Gaming, you've got a nice screen, you've got solid battery life, you've got a top-notch browser in Google Chrome, and if you're in the market for a tablet, I think that the Asus Transformer Prime is the best Android tablet, bar none. But if you're looking for something a little more portable, uh, a little easier to hold, a little easier to carry, and you're more interested in reading and browsing the web and tweeting and all that than you are gaming, hey, this is pretty good, and you've still got the gaming aspect. Uh, this is a pretty nice device, so check it out. It's available from Google for $199. And this is Andrew from joinica.com. Hope you enjoyed the video.